maybe we could start with the time after Sorgir that came out in 2018. So first of all, how was the pandemic time for your band and you as an artist? Uh, it was actually relatively easy for us. Uh, we had already in 2019 start uh, decided that we uh, were gonna put the band on take a break uh, from the band and we finished the year uh, 2019 and then we went on a break for an undecided time uh, we were we, we were at least gonna take one year off and just do absolutely nothing and uh, <laughs> uh, not even think about think about the band so uh Two months after we we went on this hiatus, uh, the whole music industry <laughs> took a break. Uh, uh, so for us, the pandemic was it it did not affect us that much. Uh, uh, about one and a half year into our break, uh, uh, we agreed. To do a tour with Fintroll, and because of the pandemic, that tour got postponed at least two times. And for us in Skalmult, that was that was okay. It just meant that we would have the break a little bit longer. So it was not until uh, last summer that we we started meeting up again and playing some shows after two and a half years away and so I think we timed our break really really well <laughs> uh, when and how were the nine songs on uh, the upcoming Udalier album uh, written and recorded then yeah uh, uh, very soon after we we got back together uh, after the break uh, we immediately started talking about uh, mm -hmm. wanting to uh, write and record a new album and uh, usually it is just uh, everybody is writing in their own home coming up with ideas riffs sometimes even whole songs and then we always meet up and rehearse quite a lot and that is where the songs uh, really come together and uh, since we are all a little bit older now and all have uh, jobs families and stuff uh, so um, we usually meet up for like four five long weekends uh, of uh, rehearsing and writing and that is what we did now uh, uh, so uh, that has been pretty much the the method for us uh, over the last few albums that you know uh, we try as much as we possibly can to be all involved when we are putting the songs together so uh, all of us write music all of us bring ideas to the table so it's been it had been five and a half years since we released Sorgir and this time around everybody came really really fresh and focused into the songwriting sessions full of ideas so it was basically it was more or less not a problem for us to to gather ideas uh, for this album. It was more like we had to leave some stuff out. <laughs> okay, from your point of view, how has the music in, uh, evolved since Sorgir? Well, it's a it's a bit of a, a difficult question. Uh, since I am so much involved uh, with the process, so 
uh, maybe it's it's it, it's it's difficult for me to pinpoint uh, exactly uh, what is different, but I think uh, on this album we we somehow went back to uh, back to how we sounded when we were first starting the band. Uh, uh, on Sorgir, it was a really, really cold and uh, heavy album, in my opinion. Uh, but this time around, uh, you know, it's 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 more melodic and probably more traditional metal influences that that shine through on this album. Uh, and maybe the main difference on this album is that uh, we had ideas, uh, more ideas from everybody this time around. And uh, even though we are in the same band, <laughs> we 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 all have uh, you know some differences in in musical taste and influences. So. I think all in all, this album is is more diverse than the previous one, and more traditional, more melodic. And this time around, we uh, we have always uh, recorded albums in Iceland, and usually found a producer, one who produces, records, uh, mixes, and masters the album. But this time around, we we went for uh, we found a super nice guy in Iceland who recorded the album and produced it with us. But then we sent the recordings to Sweden for mixing and mastering, and I think that was a really really big step for us in terms of how the album sounds, because it, it's it's good to have like someone totally different uh, approaching the the album and mixing it, someone who has not been uh, involved with the recordings and all that, and he maybe hears uh, and brings out uh, different things in the, re in the recordings. Okay, would you care to give a little insight maybe in one of the songs of the, of the 9-1 on this album, maybe tell a bit of a back background story? Oh dear. <laughs> uh, uh, ooh. I think uh, there is there is one one song on the album uh, that is kind of special, uh, at least uh, to me, because uh, uh, the, the song is the track number six on the album it's called Veður Fölnir and that song has been kind of lying around you know in the pile of songs and ideas we have for many 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 years I think uh, most of the song was already uh, written in 2015 and uh, we were thinking of putting that song on our fourth album in 2016. And then again in 2018, the song was was completely written and ready to be recorded. But it got left out of the Sorgir session as well. But this time around, it, you know, it felt right to, to have this song on the album. And it's it's very brushy uh, in a way, and that is very much to my liking. <laughs> uh, you can, I think, you can hear the the thrust, uh, early thrust uh, uh, influences in the song, and that song is one of my favorites on the album. And since it has been, you know, following us us around all these years, and finally. Uh, uh, was recorded for an album. It's just that special, and it turned out really, really nicely. 
Yeah, as you said, uh, you are coming out of hiatus and uh, there's a new album coming in exactly, I think, three days. So, and there's also, of course, the European tour coming. So, um, uh, what are your thoughts on the future of Skalmeld? Is there going to be another five years until the next album or have you talked about these things? Uh, no, I, I, I don't see us uh, <laughs> wait that long to to release a new album. Uh, we are going to follow up on, on this album uh, and we already have a European tour coming up in October and there are already uh, there's already work being done in the background for uh, another tour in March and uh, probably uh, one more tour in autumn next year, September, October, and some festivals uh, next summers already uh, being discussed. Uh, so I think we're going to at least focus on that <laughs> for for the next uh, year and a half. But I'm pretty sure that uh, already after, <laughs> after these tours, we have piled up a lot of ideas and I know that there is at least one member in the band. As as soon as we finish recording a new album, he starts talking about the next one. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, for now, we are you know, full of energy and really, really much looking forward to follow up on the new album. So, no, I don't see us uh, wait another five years for a new album. <laughs> Back in time a bit, um, what are like the first memories that come to your mind when you think about the times when the band started in 2009 or maybe the times of the debut album, Baldur, in 2010? When we, when we were starting the band, it was... Uh, we never meant for the band to be anything but a hobby. Uh, we had no plans of, of, you know, plans for the future. Uh, nothing compared to to how it turned out. Eventually, uh, the band was just. We just started the band because we wanted to start a metal band, and uh, we wanted to, you know, use the uh, our heritage our cultural cultural heritage as an influence for for a metal band and hopefully record and release one album and that is that is what we did in 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 2010 and uh, we never believed that uh, we would find people who were interested in listening to the album so uh, when it kind of uh, exploded back home in Iceland uh, and uh, that album uh, reached uh, gold sales in Iceland in a very, very short time. And oh, every show we, we played was, was sold out. That was totally unexpected and something no one in the band could could have dreamed of so those times are are i hold you know truly uh, it was a very very exciting times and you know everything that has that has followed has been like you know we try to we try to enjoy it as much as we possibly can because you never know when it's going to when we are not going to be able to 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 do this anymore, so I mean, uh, we just we just try to to take it, you know, record by record and show by show, and and enjoy it as much as much as we possibly can. From your point of view, how has the metal scene in Iceland uh, changed during these last fifteen years from those days till today? Uh, since 
we started the band uh, metal music has you know maybe kind of at least for some bands they have uh, uh, gained more attention from the from the mainstream in a way and we have a few bands in Iceland who are who are doing really really well uh, when we were starting uh, it was you know in the it was in the very very early days of the Icelandic black metal scene which has been 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 really really strong in the last few years with bands like Svarte Dudi and Mr. Mink and Odin, uh, for example. Mm, but they are more underground. But, uh, uh, I mean, I th- in my opinion, the, the Icelandic metal scene has, has, been, has been getting stronger and stronger every year since we started the band, at least. Yeah.